The history of people and rivers are inextricably connected. Rivers have played an important and life-sustaining role in human societies for thousands of years, which is why many of the world's great cities sit on the bank of a great river. Think of London on the River Thames, Rotterdam on the River Meuse, Budapest on the River Danube, Shanghai on the Yangtze, Brisbane on the Brisbane River, and the list goes on and on. Rivers are at the heart of defining the identity and lifestyle of many cities around the world, and that is nowhere stronger than in Newcastle on Tyne, in the northeast of England, on the banks of the River Tyne. The Geordies, as the people who live on the banks of the Tyne call themselves, are fiercely proud of their river. Once the river was an industrial powerhouse of the British Empire, and by the 1880s the port of Tyne exported the most coal in the world, and the river was amongst the world's largest shipbuilding and ship repairing centres. As a result, the river Tyne and its water, course, channel and bed have been shaped substantially by the human histories played out on its water and on the banks which its fellow Geordies made their home. There has been much consideration of how the river has shaped Tyneside and Tynesiders, but very little appreciation of the enormous extent to which we, humans, have shaped the river. Technology has canalized the river, shallows and rocky islands were removed, sewage and industrial waste dumped into the water, and by the 1960s the bubbling, noxious and poisonous river Tyne was declared biologically dead. By the first decade of the 21st century, the industry was mostly gone. The water of the River Tyne is again clean enough to allow the return of salmon and wildlife. In spite of the enormous efforts made to contain the River Tyne's flow, to direct its course and to maintain its navigability, the river maintains many of its natural functions. To bear out this invisible history of how the river maintained these natural functions, Historian Leona Skelton, a postdoctoral researcher and native of Tyneside, has worked on a research project that challenges us to think from a river's perspective and to include in our histories the flow pathways which rivers wanted to follow, regardless of the changes that humans have forged upon the river. In effect, Leona challenges us to look at a river as a historical actor with its own agency. To learn more about the environmental history of the River Tyne, listen to episode 69 of the Exploring Environmental History podcast. Download the podcast from the Environmental History Resources website.